hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's Kenny's top 10 list of his favorite shows of 2021. Well, in 2021, there was, including today's show, um, 104 episodes produced. Now, whether or not you thought they were all good or some were good or some were bad, it doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do, as difficult of a task as it was, I have taken out my 10 favorite shows, and that's what we're going to showcase today. So why don't we start it off with, well, go figure, number 10. Number 10. Well, it was January 29th of this year uh, that I brought you the lathe bed tool holder. And although it was a simple project that was made from scraps and a couple rare earth magnets, this thing has been brutally useful. Um, I still find that even with that tool holder, Hard habits, or old habits rather, are hard to break, and I still seem to want to put my chisels down on the table, on the lathe stand, but yet I catch myself more times than not and place it in the tool holder where it keeps them safe and they're not rolling around and that sort of thing, and that's that was its entire purpose and it serves it well. A simple project, and I hope that some of you guys took advantage of that show and made one for yourself. So, either way, at number 10, the uh, lathe bed tool holder. Number 9. Well, it was July 27th of 2021, and that brought us this gem, which was a visit with the show's QC department, or the questionable, uh, questionable comments department. Guys, this thing made the list not because of its... Um, content as far as a great project or a tip or that sort of thing it made the list because number one it was a load of fun to film i really enjoyed it i had a great time filming it but mostly it made the list because of the amount of support that you guys poured out to me over this show um let me just clarify something the negative comments that are made below from different viewers of the show or what have you they don't bother me. They, they honestly don't. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, good or bad. And, you know, I, I just don't see the point of why people come on to a YouTube show and make negative comments uh, for no apparent reason other than just to, I don't know, maybe make themselves feel good. But for me, it's almost entertaining. I find it rather comical, and it gave me a great show idea. And it will end up becoming a regular feature on the show as more negative comments come in that are worth, you know, filming or that I can actually film without having to add language and that sort of thing. So either way, they don't bother me, but the support that you guys came out with, all of your comments of keep up the great work, uh, I love what you do, etc., etc., and the one that kills me the most, you don't talk too much. <laughs> yeah, okay. Either way, at number nine, a visit with the QC department. What a fun show to film, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Number eight. June 4th was the day that the show aired, and it was a show where I saw something that interested me in a store and was blown away by the price, and I ended up making my own shop version, and that would be our miniature trim router table. Now, this thing here, guys, although it doesn't get a ton of use in my shop, um, it has been used on some episodes, it does have a use and it does get used. It is just a great little item. Quick to set up, easy to, to place. Sit it on a bench, a couple clamps here and there. I usually use a bench dog clamp as well as a quick grip just to the edge of the bench. Holds it dead solid. Um, the cord storage, the fence, everything about this project was just spectacular. Um, would I change anything? I really don't think so at this point in time. I really like the way that I kind of designed it and I like the way that it works. Um, I, I honestly don't think I would change anything about it. But 
either way, it was a wonderful project. It was a load of fun. And, uh, you know, it saved me quite a bit of coin, even though now with the price of plywood, it's probably worth more than diamonds. But regardless of the price of plywood, at number eight is the miniature router table, and it was a fantastic program. Number seven. February 5th brought us a project that I hope the music lovers out there tried. Um, and that would be the tabletop music stand. Guys, this project was a total success. At the beginning, it was just a concept. I didn't know if it was going to work, but making a mock-up out of a couple pieces of hardboard and some nails, it was the most rustic thing you could ever imagine. But the final project and the final product when it was all said and done that was derived from that little mock-up is beautiful. The, the walnut scrap that I use, again, another great scrap project, but the walnut scrap turned out just gorgeous. Um, this thing is not only beautiful, but it is functional and it works great. It is still working great to this day and gets plenty of use. Um, it's absolutely wonderful to, if you're jamming with friends or whatever, you can take it with you, sit it there beside you, open it up, it stands there, holds your music. It's just fantastic, guys. It's a great project, and it definitely deserves to be on the list. Number six. Well, almost a year ago, it was January the 8th, uh, we started a multi-part series on this, and uh, that was my router table build. Guys, I, I don't know what to say other than if something isn't broken, don't try to fix it. And over time of trying to think of how I wanted to house my Jessam router and all of my accessories, um, I realized that the original design from my original router table was a design that I loved. It worked for me. It worked for me for many, many years. I never once in that uh, project thought, ah, gee, I wish I'd done it like this. So once I got that through my head, I realized don't change the design. And that's what brought you the series on making the router table. Now, I did have to make modifications and adjustments because of the lift mechanism and that sort of thing. But as long as you guys follow along with those, um, with, with those parts of the series, there's no reason that you could make a router table like this. And I have to tell you, just like the original design and just like the original one that I made with my Freud router in it, this one here, it... it Honestly, it, uh, it, it, it's fantastic. I, I have absolutely no complaints with it whatsoever. There's nothing that I would change. The dust collection works well. The drawers hold all my stuff. The bit drawers are fantastic. Uh, there, is, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that I would change in this project at this point. And it's just, you know, fantastic. I struggled with putting it in the list where it is right now. I thought it should be higher than number six possibly. But you know what, there's just been so many great projects this year that not everything can be at the top of the list. So either way, at number six, the router table build. Oh my goodness, what a project. Number five. July 30th, July 30th. You know what, one of the more fun projects that I made throughout the year, uh, and made for the sole purpose of seeing whether or not I could do it. And that was this little uh, building block minifigure made of wood. Guys, this thing here started off with a pair of calipers and one of the original little minifigures. And then it was scaled up to, I think I did it at five times, five times as big as what an original was. I can't remember exactly, but Either way, I scaled it all off and made the drawings for it. And, you know, there was lathe work. There was scroll saw work. There was drill press. There was, oh, it's just a fantastic project. It really is. It was a load of fun. 
And the best part about it is it wasn't one of those things where I just showed you on the show, hey, let's do this and this and this, and you do this measurement and that. I was able to make up some PDF plans and quite a few of you took advantage of those plans and I offered them free of charge. And they're still available today. If you guys want those plans, just gotta send me an email. I'd be more than happy to send them to you. Send me a picture of your finished figure. I'd love to see what you guys come up with as well. Uh, but just a wonderful project. Uh, guys, it was just, you know what? It made number five because it was satisfying for me to be able to take it from a concept to scaling it out to a drawing to making it successfully and then being able to offer it to you guys. Just an all around great experience for me. And that's why it made the list just a load of fun. Number four. Well, those of you who have watched this show for any length of time or those of you that know me uh, know how much my wife and I love Halloween. And September 7th brought us show number four on the list, which was making the Grim Reaper statue for our front yard for Halloween. This thing was awesome. Just a load of fun. Everything from the, uh, the concept of it, to the build, to the spray paint, to the sewing machine, to the dyeing the uh, tarps uh, or the drop cloths, whatever you want to call it. The entire process was enjoyable and to see it all come together. And then on top of that, to add that lantern that I uh, converted to electric with the flame bulb in the front. What a success story. What an absolutely amazing project. And the fact that it all folds down for easy storage was just a bonus. I know you can't fold down a bucket of concrete, but, you know, that gets put off to the side somewhere anyway. But what a fantastic project. And I hope some of you guys made that for your Halloween display because, honest to goodness, you know what? We just had a blast with it. It was just a load of fun and uh, a really great decoration that was made very inexpensively. So there you go. Just a lot of fun with this one, guys. Another great addition to our Halloween display. And uh, oh, I hope you guys made your own. Number three. Well, April 16th brought us number three and it was another multi-part series and it was for making a wooden chess set on the scroll saw. Um, while I can't take the credit for the actual designs of the pieces that came from a book, what I can take credit for is the show and the fact that I was able to bring it to your attention. And I know quite a few of you took advantage of, of the information that I provided and purchased the book. And some of you have sent me pictures of your chess sets that you're making. And guys, they are beautiful. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, you guys should just be so proud of the product that you made because it's unreal. It really is. I love seeing your work. And this show gave me that opportunity to see some of your work. Um, but between the chess set on the scroll saw and then the wall chess board, uh, which was a totally different concept for me, this project was... Uh, it was enjoyable through and through, right from beginning to end. It really was. Um, I, I even didn't mind applying the finish, which is something that I normally don't like doing. And then on top of that, to add the little uh, felt or flocked discs on the bottom that I got from Spectro Coatings Corporation, the whole thing was just an enjoyable project from step A to Z. It was just incredible, honestly, worthwhile. If you get the chance to make one, do yourself a favor and make it because the sense of satisfaction that you get from making a set like this is, is just undescribable. So that is why this show came in at number three. Number two. Well, it seems like only yesterday or a little while ago that uh, number two of my favorite shows of 2021 was aired. 
It actually started airing November 30th, and uh, that was our 1929 Ford steak bed truck build from Toys and Joys Patterns. Uh, guys, this project it was meant as a confidence builder. That's why the entire seven part series was made. It was made to give those of you sitting on a fence thinking, ah, can I do this? Can I not? Can I? It was made so that you could see the pieces being built, built rather, all of them, and give you the confidence to make your own. And I really hope that some of you guys did that. Now, originally the film was, or the uh, the episodes of the show were filmed to air on Tuesdays. That was the original plan for this uh, series. But what happened was, is when I went through these series all the way, it brought us way into like mid-January before it was actually finished. And I just didn't think it was fair that for those of you who did get the confidence, you just build up your confidence and then you have to wait two weeks to get the next episode. I just thought it, it just wasn't right to do that. So I wanted to put them back to back, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. And although at the end of them, each one says, you know, alternative Tuesdays, um, that's what it was originally meant for. But uh, sometimes we get scheduling changes and I'm okay with that. And well, I'm okay with it because it's my show. <laughs> Either way, guys, at number two, just a load of fun. Please tell me that you took advantage of these uh, the, this series and made your own. But at number two, that Toys and Joys 1929 Ford, uh, just a load of fun. Time well spent. Number one. So number one, what could it be? Guys, uh, as hard as it is to take 10 episodes out of 104 and say which ones are your favorite and then have to rate them in order of what's your favorite, um, being able to pick the number one favorite show for me was the easiest decision ever. It instantly jumped out at me and that's all there is to it. It's uh, it, it aired September 26th, I believe, of this year. And what it was, was the Ships in a Bottle. This is the second year in a row that Ships in a Bottle has made it to the number one uh, program. And it's for good reason. This one here was a little different. I tried some new techniques that I'd never tried before. And that would be the uh, Mod Podge being used on the resin to give texture for the wake of the ships. Uh, not doing the C with silicone like I did in the original series, but instead texturing the resin and then painting it with acrylic paint. Um, just a great technique. And the fact that I was able to take two ships and jam them into that bottle uh, was just... Uh, they're, they are so satisfying. They really, really are. And I took processes that I used in the first build, and I learned from those, and I took that experience and transferred it to the next build. Things like not using CA glue or wet CA glue inside the bottle, because it will give a white haze that you'll have to clean. Um, things like double checking to make sure that it goes in through that neck. If you remember my original Ship in a Bottle series, that was quite the struggle. It was a, a real, uh, oh, I, I don't even know what to call it. it. It was a tense moment. It didn't look like it was going to go in. And I ended up actually damaging it. These ones here went in smooth as silk. Um, the whole process, uh, I, I can't say enough about these Ships in a Bottle. Um, you don't need a lot of tools to make them. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment. You don't need anything really more than a little chunk of wood, a pocket knife, uh, a little bit of dowels, maybe some paint and uh, resin for the ocean. Other than that, the rest can be done with the most basic of basic tools. Even the stand could be made with a hand saw and a fret saw. You don't need anything special to make ships in a bottle. But the product is so impressive that it looks like you've got a million dollar shop. So guys, 
Take advantage of these series, both the original and this one. Take advantage of the information that I'm providing you and make yourself a ship in a bottle. You will have no idea the sense of pride you get when you see that thing sitting on the shelf and people walk by and go, man, that's awesome. How did you get that in the bottle? That looks fantastic. Wow, what a beautiful project, etc., etc. Bottom line, number one, bar none, hands down, the ship's in a bottle. Just, it's my favorite. <laughs> and there you have it. Kenny's top 10 list of his favorite shows of 2021. Guys, I know that this was supposed to be a Woodworking Friday show, but you know what, considering it's New Year's Eve, I thought we would just back up and reflect on the year, as of course that's what New Year's Eve is intended to be. Um, it's been a lot of fun this year, guys. I want to thank you all so much for joining me here on the show, because without you guys, I've said this so many times before, Without you guys, it's just this crazy guy here talking to himself in his shop, and that's no fun. Um, guys, regardless of how difficult it is to pull 10 episodes out and make them my favorites, what is very easy to realize is that uh, I, I really love doing this show. I enjoy every aspect of it. I enjoy the filming. I enjoy making the projects, of course. I enjoy the editing. I enjoy posting. And most importantly, I enjoy my interaction with all of you out there. Um, that is one of the most satisfying things about this show is I get to talk to so many amazing people all around the world. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the luckiest guys going for being able to do that. And honestly, my interaction with all of you makes it well worth all the effort it takes to make, make this show. It's, uh, it's a lot of work, but the amount of satisfaction that I get out of it is, uh, is well worth all that effort. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. Um, what did you think of the list? Uh, are these your favorites too? Do you agree with some? Do you disagree with others? Did you have a favorite that didn't make my list? If so, let's hear about it below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Guys, I want to wish you all the happiest of New Year's. Uh, all the best for 2022. I want to thank you so much for tuning in again this week and all through the year. And, um, well, as always, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. For real this time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.